and you're watching Paleo 101, where we, talk, where we talk about fossils, minerals, geology, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Today, I was just going to do a blog video. I just wanted to do something where I could talk about what the things that I've been up to and the things that I've been doing and some of the new stuff that I've been doing over the summer. Well, let's get started. Um, just recently, I sent off fossil specimens to Columbus State University to Dr. David Schwimmer, who was in charge of the geology department there. And um, we found fossils from the um, Conestoga Formation dealing with trilobites. And this is all Middle Cambrian to Upper Cambrian aged fossils. And we went to a certain place in Georgia where we have um, shale deposits and marine uh, deposits belonging to the Upper Cambrian uh, period. And we discovered, of course, trilobites there. And here are a couple of examples of what we found. We found most of the species belong to the site that we went to are uh, from the trilobite Espelaspis butzi. And this is a trilobite that lived during the Middle Cambrian period. Um, I also found one agnostic trilobite. And here's an example of an agnostic uh, I actually found in the upper layers. It's quite small, you can't probably see it, but it's a very, very small trilobite. It's probably one of the rarest ones that were found in the uh, in this part of the Conestoga Formation in Northwest Georgia. So I sent off specimens that were a little bit weird to Dr. David Schwimmer. Um, these trilobites had long genal spines, and these are basically these um, extended, um, these long appendages ex extending from the cephalon, the head. And this is um, an example of the what Bill Montante discovered. Um, it, it's a pretty good example. Here is a, a trilobite with these long genal spines running on the side. And so we thought that was pretty weird. We don't normally find that in the trilobites that were found. And so we sent them off to Colum Columbus State University to Dr. David Schwimmer to have them identified. And we think that may that they may belong to Espelaspis butzi. Um, this is a previously known trilobite from the uh, Conestoga Formation, but it's first recorded in um, in the site that we went to. So that's pretty interesting and pretty cool. Maybe it'll get published, maybe it won't, but it seems like it's gonna be a really, really cool um, thing to hear back from. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what, what's out there and how much we found and some of the new things that we discovered. Um, so I've been dealing with a lot of through that. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I've looked in microscopes and looking at microfossils and um, looking at all kinds of different things. And I also went out with um, a geologist from Georgia Mineral Society and I showed them the rock outcrop I go to all the time and to collect um, specimens. Um, we're basically, we're at the Bavard Fault Zone and that's a couple of miles from my house, basically walking distance. I at least walk there six times a day or maybe uh, six times, you know, per, uh, per month to um, do a little bit of research and collect rock specimens. And that's actually what I've been doing. I've been up there at least six times. Um, probably the seventh, this is the seventh time going up there. And we collected a couple of uh, rock specimens from that fault. Um, the fault, last time the fault moved was around 300 million years ago. So that's what lower car carboniferous. And so what we discovered were slick insides. And basically slick, slick insides are these rocks. And as the fault was moving, friction started to um, started to indent these grooves in the rock here. And so here's another example of a slick inside. This is all physical geology. Um, here's another example of a slick inside of what we found. And so as the fault starts to move, it, it, it moves in any direction really. So when it starts to move, um, I'm gonna use my hands as an example, it basically slips. So basically what this, how these rocks occur is that the fault is actually slipping or moving and it creates friction that friction actually creates the grooves in the rock to show that this fault was actually moving um, up in a point of time. We're not exactly sure um, when the fault moved, really. I mean, it moved continually, continuously throughout um, the history of the planet, but we're kind of certain that the, 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 the fact that the fault last moved around 300 million years ago, which is lower Carboniferous. And so some of the stuff that we found there was pretty interesting. We found lots of folds in the rock. We found lots of... Um, um, the rocks were actually bent and, and, and squeezed and all these other kinds of deformations that we found in the rocks and um, measuring a couple of uh, other things like um, he told me that it would be really interesting if we if we could actually measure the folds in the rocks and actually measure um, the, the exact positions in which the fold was um, formed called the nose fold and all this other terminology from physical geology we we're out in the field and we collected a lot of rock samples. Um, basically, we just picked up some slick inside samples that we found. I didn't even realize what they were until he told me about them. So it's really interesting to, f 
figure out and actually know and actually research. So that's really cool. And I had a, a really good time out in the field. Um, I hope to get out there again. Hopefully, I mean, I'm 18 now. I'm a senior. So yeah, it's good. my last time, my last year of high school is um, next year. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm excited about, you know, um, becoming a young paleontologist and geologist. I've gotten some great help from other paleontologists like Dr. David, um, excuse me, but um, Dr. Tony Martin and Dr. Pamela Gore, who is a geologist at Georgia Perimeter College, now Georgia State University. Um, I got a lot of help from a lot of geologists and amateur paleontologists and basically getting my experience out there with not only Georgia paleontology, but dinosaur paleontology, geology, physical geology, sedimentology, um, uh, a lot of other, a lot of other things that uh, are just really cool. And I've been really interested in dinosaurs from Appalachia, comparing dinosaurs from Appalachia to animals uh, from dinosaurs from Larmidia, because um, dinosaurs in Appalachia are very fragmentary. Just recently, there was a um, an article finding the first ceratopsian, the first horned dinosaur in Mississippi, but this is only described by a tooth. And so paleontologists from California are identifying it from um, horned dinosaurs from Alberta and, can and, and, and other places around the, around the United States. And so that's really interesting. And in Georgia, we have a couple of dinosaurs uh, like ornithomimids. We have a couple of raptors. We have a, uh, a tyrannosaur called Appalachiosaurus that was first discovered in the, in the Demopolis Chalk Formation in Alabama. But we start, also started to find some fossils in Georgia as well. We have a Forathon, which is a large hadrosaur. We have a pterosaur, which isn't a dinosaur, it's a flying reptile, but we have pterosaurs, we have uh, large crocodiles, we have hadrosaurs with actual bite marks from the uh, sharks that were swimming in the oceans. And so hopefully I can do a lot of research with the dinosaurs from Georgia. I want to do a lot of research, but I'm also interested in just dinosaur paleontology in general. Um, understanding the physiology and the evolutionary history of dinosaurs and even their extinction how they how they became how they became extinct and why birds are living dinosaurs how did they become dinosaurs and and the all the evolutionary processes that have to go with um dinosaur paleontology i'm also not just interested in dinosaurs but i'm interested in invertebrate paleontology really i love trilobites since this i have again a couple of examples here um i love trilobites i love everything that has to do with paleontology whether it's on a microscopic level, whether it's on a make macro macroscopic level, which is large organisms, um, I'm interested in all life, all prehistoric life, and basically I'm just interested in basically geology and paleontology, and the things that we found are just amazing, and it'll increase my um, knowledge of paleontology and geology. So I'm really interested in everything. I'm I'm not only interested in dinosaurs, but I'm interested in all uh, all prehistoric life, mammoths, dinosaurs, trilobites, crinoids. In fact, I'm going to be doing a um lecture on September 12th on crinoid fossils and I have some people who are going to bring specimens and bring in pictures and going to help me out a lot because crinoids aren't my specialty. I, I, I lean towards the trilobite section. I lean towards the arthropods, but crinoids are extremely interesting and extremely diverse. So I'm going to be writing up a lot of notes dealing with crinoids and, and, and trilobites and all this kind of stuff. Just recently I did uh, a lecture on trilobites from Georgia and basically um, explaining their diversification and explaining how these animals live throughout their life. And so it's so cool. It's it's so cool. And so um, I'm going to be um, applying to some other paleontology programs as the um, 2016 starts to close. So I've just been doing a lot of stuff in uh, 2016 and it's all, it's been a great year. It's been a great year. I've had I've got a lot of things accomplished. I've read a couple of things. I'm reading tons of books now on um, dinosaurs from the British Isles um, by Dean Lomax from Wonderful Life, um, based upon the Burgess Shell Formation by Stephen J. Gold. Tyrannosaur Chronicles is a great book by David Hahn. Um, it's a great book. It talks about tyrannosaurs. And I may just be doing a lecture on tyrannosaurs. And so everything is really cool. I've had a great 2016 as an amateur geologist and paleontologist, and I hope to start growing as a scientist as um as the year starts to move along. This is Paleo 101 and I'll see you later.